This video will discuss the total collision rate of an ideal gas. So in the previous video, we looked at the collision frequency for an individual particle inside an ideal gas. And now we're going to extend that to the collision frequency between all particles in that gas. So we're going to define the quantity ZAA. This is the collision frequency between all particles of gas A per unit volume per unit time. So for a given gas, we have that the collision total collision frequency is going to equal 1 half times the density of particles times the collision frequency of an individual particle. So let's think about where we got these uh, pieces from. So the total collision frequency, it's going to depend on uh, the number of particles there. So the more dense th those particles are, the more collisions we're going to have. The collisions that an individual particle has are going to be determined by ZA, its individual collision frequency. So we have the individual collision frequency times the total number of particles per unit volume, the density. And the collision frequency is already per unit time. And then our factor of 1 half here comes because of this. If we have particle 1 of A and particle 2 of A, and they collide with one another, well, that's part of Z1, but it's also part of Z2. So whose collision counts? Does it count as a collision for particle 1 or for particle 2? So the answer is uh, both and neither, because that collision does count as a collision for each of them, but it should only count once for the total collision frequency. So we have to account for that 1 half, because uh, each time that e each individual particle is colliding, it's colliding with another particle which whose uh, collision frequency also counts towards that total. Okay, so substituting in the value of the collision frequency for an individual particle from our previous video, we now have 1 half density times square root of 2 density times the cross-sectional area of our particle as it travels times the average velocity of that particle. So the total collision frequency between particles of the same gas as they travel through space is 1 over the square root of 2. So square root of 2 over 2 is 1 over the square root of 2. Cross-sectional area of the gas times the density squared of that gas times the average velocity of that gas. All right, now we can also define the quantity ZAB. This is the collision frequency between all particles of A and B per unit volume per unit time. So this is equal to, now this time we do not have to correct for double counting here. We don't have to, uh, <clears throat> we don't have to account for double counting because here uh, they're each counting towards their own. So we have sigma AB, that's the effective cross-sectional area, which is the mean uh, value between the two of them. We have the density of particle A, the density of particle B, and UR, the relative velocity between the two of them. So sigma AB, the mean cross-sectional area, that's the effective diameter of A plus the effective diameter of B over 2 squared. So we're basically taking the mean diameter between the two of them and squaring that. Then for our relative velocity, that's going to be the velocity of the average velocity of a particle with mass of the reduced mass between the two of them. So mu, the reduced mass, is equal to the product of ma and mb divided by the sum of ma and mb, and thus the relative velocity will be a speed of will be the average speed of a particle with the mass, which is the reduced mass of those two particles. For each of these particles, their density is the number of particles of that species divided by the volume, which if it's an ideal gas is going to be gas constant times temperature divided by Avogadro's number times the pressure of that individual gas. Okay, so a numerical example of what these values end up coming out to be. So if we have nitrogen gas at one bar and 298.15 Kelvin, inside every milliliter of that gas, so every cubic centimeter of that gas, every second, 
there's going to be approximately 9 times 10 to the 28 collisions. So there's going to be a million times Avogadro's number collisions per milliliter per second in a in a nitrogen gas at room temperature and pressure. So that if that seems like an enormous number of collisions, that's because it is. So if you think about <clears throat> the average speed of N2 gas at 298 Kelvin, that's about 515 meters per second. The mean free path of N2 gas is is going to be about 50 nanometers. So every single molecule of nitrogen gas at room temperature and pressure is going to undergo approximately 10 billion collisions per second. So each mo each gas molecule in there is undergoing about 10 billion collisions and there's about 10 to the 18 of them. So we have our thus our 9 times 10 to the 28 collisions per that pretty small unit of area per pretty small unit of time.